Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today we're going to be talking about the 23 books that I ended up reading in January. <laughs> So I read 23 books in the month of January. I'm very excited to talk to you about them. This month I participated in the historical romance readathon. So that was a big chunk of my reading for January. And I also had two DNFs or didn't finish. There are two books on this list that I'm going to talk about that I'm not going to be giving an in-depth summary or thoughts of because there's going to be a dedicated reading vlog that has those books in it, if that makes sense. I'm just going to tell you though that I did end up reading these specific books in January um, and then I also had two buddy reads so let's get started so I can show you all of the books that I read in January so we're gonna start out with the two books that I didn't finish DNFs the first one being Tarnished Empire by Ava Harrison so I originally got this one off of Kindle Unlimited it is in my Kindle Unlimited TBR video that I made a couple months ago um, I was really excited for this one um, because this is a mafia romance but it was honestly so dumb like so dumb <laughs> so basically our heroine she is the adoptive daughter to this mob boss and um her father has been accused of killing another mob boss's brother even though he says he did not kill him the brother to the mob boss um is trying to get back at her father to get at her father she really wants to help her father so she goes to this club that she knows that he is at and then tries her hardest to get him to notice her by having her be not interested in him so that he can notice her if that makes sense because he's like oh, this woman she is not interested in me Ooh, i'm I, i'm captivated by this woman who doesn't want me he finds out very quickly who this woman is and knows who she is and is like okay we're gonna we're gonna follow what she does like we're gonna we're gonna just go with the flow and what she does and see what she does to try and get under my skin and get to know me more you can just see how dumb this heroine is like she didn't realize oh maybe they would maybe do a background check on me or figure out who i actually am um and then he invites her to this like yacht party he's having anyway she gets stuck on this yacht like he kidnaps her on this yacht and like she is just dumb like dumb dumb i i could not stand her at all <laughs> anyway just not my jam uh if you want a mafia book i don't recommend this one in all honesty <laughs> sorry and then the other book that i dnf'd um i'm not gonna be talking about it though because it is in a dedicated reading vlog that will come out at some point um it is the body painter by pepper winters yeah i did finish this one um this is a romance book where um an ad is put in a paper for a body canvas like the body of a woman like someone needs to paint on a woman and a woman needs to be comfortable with somebody painting on them for a long period of time and not having any clothes on i didn't finish this book and you can wait for that reading vlog so you can figure out why yeah <laughs> so now we're going to be going from my least favorite to my favorite reads of january my least favorite read of the month it's not that bad it's a three star but I was so looking forward to it for some reason like the cover just looked bizarre and so I was looking forward to it um and so it's The Librarian and the Beast by S.J. Sanders book one in the Minotaur series <laughs> this cover is bizarre right right I thought it was gonna be like an alien romance book uh it kind of is I would kind of categorize it as a fantasy romance this woman lives in this village she is a librarian but because she's a woman the like parliament or the I don't really know how to describe it. like the council of this village like don't take her very seriously and she wants to become a transcriber and like actually write books and write things and they won't let her because she is a woman they bring this new transcriber in to write books and everything and while she like meets him he's like basically telling her yeah romance books are stupid if books don't have like things you can learn from them um basically like textbooks essentially or the bible um I'm gonna burn them and so she's like that's not gonna happen I love my library so much and so she asks her friend to help her like sneak out all of these books like romance books and things that she thinks this man will burn to take it to this abandoned farm or abandoned barn that's on the opposite side of a very dangerous river and so they get over the river they put all the books in there and then on their way back she falls into the river and gets swept up by the current she wakes up on the side of the river um out of the water she was rescued by a minotaur and these minotaurs are known to be like fantastical kind of like the tooth fairy they don't really exist you know and so she's like freaking out but she's like i need to follow this minotaur because i know nobody else and i don't know where i am so i need to follow this person his name is false 
Um, and yeah, he is a minotaur. They're freaking weird. I can't even like picture what they look like in my brain. They like, they have red skin. Like the, the, the cover like kind of like shows, but it's like really hard to like think of in my brain. And like, they have like a horse body, like a centaur, but they don't have hooves. They have like, like talons. It was, it was really weird. Cause it was like, he has a horse body and like, they were do they were doing stuff and it just <laughs> it did not float my boat at all major thing why i didn't like this book was that it just got so boring like it was really boring like it was really interesting at first like her washing up on shore and him rescuing her and she meeting all the minotaurs and seeing that they actually exist and everything and like that was pretty cool but like then once they have like a fake dating or a fake mate trope yeah it just got downhill so yeah, three stars from me. Then I read Stolen by the Alien by Amanda Milo. This one is not my favorite thing ever, unfortunately. This is a uh, alien romance book where our heroine um, is rescued by this alien. And it's, it's just, I can't really describe this to you. It's really complicated. I don't even remember like so much that happened in here. It's so complicated and like confusing that I can't describe this book, like literally at all. One thing that I do remember is that this book, you get introduced to so many side characters to where it's setting up so many books in the series to where that took away from the main couple in my opinion. Um, and I felt like if the author didn't do that, like it would have been so much better, but she like had a lot of focus on side characters that I didn't really care about or I didn't know all that much about. Um, because they weren't the main characters in the story and there wasn't a lot of world building. I was very confused throughout most of this um, The couple was really interesting though, but I just I, I wanted more development and unfortunately we didn't get that So I ended up giving this one three stars. My next three stars is An English Bride in Scotland by Lindsay Sands This was actually a reread for me and it was a buddy read with Jen from the book refuge uh, She's been wanting to get into Lindsay Sands I asked her if we could buddy read a book in January and she gave me a list of books that was on her radar to see if they were also on my radar and I saw an English Ride in Scotland on there by Lindsay Sands and I read this book when I first started my YouTube channel back in 2017 which was like four years ago so I didn't remember a thing and I didn't end up continuing on with the series I think I read books one and two in this series and then I didn't finish it I really wanted to kind of finish the series because I originally gave this book four stars this is a historical romance book our heroine when she was young was sent to a nunnery her parents just didn't want to deal with her anymore they already had like their heir which was her older sister who was going to marry a um, Scottish laird when she came of age and then that sister ends up running away with the stable boy and so they have to bring her sister back from the nunnery she's the one that has to marry the scottish laird and so it's a romance between the two of them her not knowing anything about life because she grew up in a nunnery um so i really liked that trope i really like the nunnery trope in historical romances i have another one that i'm gonna talk about soon and there's also a mystery plot in here and if you don't know me mysteries are not my thing in romance books specifically historical romances or just no in general mysteries are not my jam in romance books like why do they need to exist like why does somebody need to be out to kill one of the people like why can't they just have a, a romance why does there need to be a murder plot i don't i don't get it this one didn't bug me as much as say like other romances that i've read that have mystery plot points in it but i think it's honestly because i've already read this book so i kind of like knew what I, what to expect i did forget certain things in here but i definitely did not like this book as much as i read it the first time and i was talking to jen about this afterward because uh, she also gave it three stars i'm pretty sure um and i was like telling her how i believe i think i gave it four stars because this was like probably i believe the first historical romance that i ever read um, back when I was a freshman in college um, and so I just I didn't know any better <laughs> and I didn't really have like my palette set up when it comes to historic romances and what I like in romances and so overall it just it didn't live up to uh, what I originally thought of the book but it was an okay book overall I might continue on with the series I own book two in physical form who knows my library has all of them on audio so we'll see what happens next I have two books by Ruby Dixon which I both gave three stars to they're not my favorite thing just because this series is not my favorite and that is the Corsairs series by Ruby Dixon I have read book one before which was the Corsairs captive but I completely forgot what was going on and so I decided to reread it I'm reading all of Ruby Dixon's book in publication order because some of the series like mesh together if that makes sense and so basically this pirate he's our hero in here um he's a security man he's blue as you can see from the cover he rescues our heroine fran who is a human slave and so yeah he rescues her puts her on his ship and um it's their like romance after that um it was like interesting it's just not my favorite ruby dixon but i do want to read all of her books so i 
pulled through this series. <laughs> so then I also have book two, which is In the Corsair's Bed by Ruby Dixon. This one I also gave three stars to. This is another instance where our hero is a Sakui man. I believe he's on the same spaceship as the first one, um, but he's another crewmate and he sees this woman at a slave auction and buys her because he knows that um, like that's his mate and that's who he wants. Um, but in here, I absolutely adored how respectful our hero was. Like he's an alien man and alien he does not exist, does not exist. And he is probably one of the most respectful heroes I have ever read about ever. Um, our heroine has dealt with being a alien slave um, for a very long time. So she's used to people using her body and she doesn't really care about her body anymore. She doesn't really think about how important or how meaningful being with a person can be um, like intimately. He like slowly starts to show her how being intimate with someone is something that is really special and should be treasured um, and that nobody's gonna like take that away from her anymore. I loved that a part of this book. That's the main reason why I didn't get lower than a three because that part of it like saved it. But overall, the other parts was just boring to me. <laughs> it is also kind of like a reused plot, you know, but also Ruby Dixon's known for her reusing plots, but I feel like the characters in here were quite similar to the ones before, besides maybe one extra little character trait here and there. So yeah. Then we have my first read of 2021, which was a Prison Planet Barbarian. This is another book by Ruby Dixon. Um, this is like kind of like a standalone. Again, I am reading all of her books in publication order and I feel like I'm getting the best experience possible because I think you see some of these characters like pop up here and there. And I think um, the uh, hero in this one is the brother to the first book in the Corsair series. So our heroine ends up getting kidnapped by aliens and then something happens to where she is being put on a prison planet. And this planet is horrific. This prison is horrific. Um, and our hero is in the like heavy duty security part of the prison planet. He like sees her one day and knows that that's his mate and he decides that he is going to rescue both of them and get them both out of there. And she has no idea who this guy is, um, but he ha has like put in his mind that's his mate and he's gonna rescue both of them. So it is them on this prison planet and him trying to rescue them. So I like the storyline. If this book was a full length book and we had like more time with our characters and more character development I think I would have loved it but we didn't get those things I just wanted more from this one so I ended up giving it a 3.5 out of 5 stars next I have Temptation of a Proper Governess by Kathy Maxwell I'm not going to go too in-depth for the books that I read during the historical romance readathon because there is a whole entire hour-long vlog talking about all those books it's a marriage of convenience with this governess and a uh well-renowned rake. That's all I'm gonna give you. You go check out that blog. This is the first Kathy Maxwell I read and I believe I read this book for the ripped bodice prompt of the historical romance readathon. Again this book had a huge mystery aspect in here and I didn't really jive with that. Um, so I ended up only giving this one 3.5 out of 5 stars. Then I have The Duke I Tempted by Scarlet Peckham. This was also for the Historical Romance Readathon. You can check out that vlog for my in-depth thoughts. Um, this is a romance with a uh, sub-hero. He's going through a lot of stuff. He's a tortured hero. And then there's like, there's a scandal going on and to save the heroine, the hero proposes marriage even though he doesn't want to get married. And the main reason why I love this book was simply because of our heroine. The heroine is one of my favorite heroines of all time. My main issue in here was the hero. He's just not my kind of hero in all honesty. This book really reminded me of The Duke and I by Julia Quinn. I didn't, I haven't read the book, but it reminded me of the TV show a lot. Um, so if you want to read, read a book that's kind of like that, our hero is very reluctant to marriage and everything. And it's, it's, it, it's similar in some ways for me. And yeah, Poppy was my favorite part of this book. I loved her. She, she's a botanist. She deals a lot with her plant nursery and it was, I loved that part of it so much. Um, but the hero in here just wasn't my kind of hero, if that makes sense. So I didn't love it as much as other people did. Again, go watch that reading vlog if you want to know other reasons why I did like it and didn't like it. So I ended up giving this one a 3.75 out of 5 stars. Then I ended up reading The Virgin Hunt Games by Mel Teshko. Um, I got this one off of NetGalley. This is going to be in that reading vlog that I was talking about earlier that will come out at some point. And I ended up giving this one 3.75 out of 5 stars. This one, really interesting. I think of it as an adult senior version of uh, The Hunger Games. So yeah, look forward to that vlog whenever that one comes out. <laughs> then I have another Ruby Dixon reread for me. We have Barbarian's Mate, book number six in the Ice Planet Barbarian series. I was just really in the mood to read a Josie and Hayden story. I just wanted to read them all over again because I get in these moods where I want to read a certain couple really badly from this series because 
I've basically memorized all of the couples at this point because I love this series so much. And I just wanted to read about Josie and Hayden all over again because their romance is quite different with other people's to where they put off resonance literally for so long because this is an enemies to lovers romance or hate to love not really hate to love enemies to lovers is more what I categorize it as our characters try so hard not to be with each other or our heroine does at least and our hero is respecting her decision that's what I liked about this Hayden doesn't want to not be with her but he respects her so much to where he will be in pain to like respect her and follow her wishes and so um that's the main part I liked about this uh a summary again <laughs> this is a notebook number six in the Ice Planet Barbarian series, uh, alien romance series where human women crash land on an ice planet and each person has a cooey inside their body which will keep them healthy on this planet and then indicate to them when their lifelong mate and partner is near. And so at this point Josie is the only human woman who does not have a mate. Her IED, IUD, IED, IUD, I don't know, birth control thing falls out <laughs> and then uh, her body's telling her oh she's ready to have a mate because uh, she can finally have kids now. And it turns out uh, her mate may or may not be uh, the alien she hates the most on this planet. <laughs> I really love this one. It's one of my favorites in the series. I just love the enemies to lovers romance in here. And I just love how much Hayden loves her and respects her. And then how Josie grows. You can see her growing to love him. It is so good. I love this one. I ended up giving this one four stars again. Then I read a historical romance Christmas anthology, which is How the Dukes Stole Christmas with books by Tessa Dare, Sarah McLean, Sophie Jordan, and Joanna Shoup. This was my first time reading anything by Sarah McLean and just Sophie Jordan. I enjoyed all of these books. Um, so I just ended up giving this book four stars. And these are historical romances um, dealing with Christmas. And so that was really, really fun. I had a fun time reading it. I listened to it on audio on a road trip and it was pretty enjoyable. So I just ended up giving this one four stars overall. Then I read Captive Desires by Robin Lovett, the second book, a part of the Planet of Desire series. I enjoyed a book one so much. Book two was amazing as well. So basically, uh, if you didn't know about the first book, which was Toxic Desire, this book takes place on a steamy planet to where like there are like toxins in like the air that uh get you hot and bothered and uh if you're not like constantly doing it uh you'll be in extreme pain <laughs> so <laughs> um that is what our hero and heroine have to go through our heroine is a human woman and then our hero is this alien gold alien species uh, i can't pronounce it and you like learn about the species and like their war with the humans in book one but they are at war and so it's been really hard for both of them to like for these two characters to get over the fact that their species have been at war with each other for so long so they're trying to get over like that feeling because like they shouldn't be but our hero Ga i think it's his, you pronounce it ganon ganon he had a mate years ago and for his culture i believe you have to wait two centuries uh to be able to like come out of mourning period and to start looking for another mate like that's typical for their culture but then he meets our heroine on this planet named azura he sparks this like a feeling in him and he's like this should not be happening i am in mourning my body should not be doing this and they just they get together and it is a romance between the two of them alien romance i enjoyed this one so much quite steamy uh yeah i think i like book one a little bit more though in all honesty but i can't wait to continue on with this series i ended up giving this one a four out of five stars then i read his beauty by jack harbin i learned about this book from brie from in love and words and this is a beauty and the beast retelling so it's just a very steamy very short beauty and the beast you're telling that I had a lot of fun reading about. I really love how unique Jack Carbon made the story and little tidbits here and there. You can see the original story in this book but I really like how unique he made certain things in here. I had so much fun reading this. I'm definitely going to be checking out more of Jack Carbon's books. So I ended up giving this one a four out of five stars. Then I have A Night to Surrender by Tessa Dare. I read this during the historical romance readathon so you can check out that vlog for my in-depth thoughts. This is a romance series where it takes place in Spindle Cove. It's a Spindle Cove series and this is a, a little city, a little town where women go to who are spinsters um who are trying to escape a troubled past that kind of thing so our heroine kind of runs this city with her father and then one day um this man comes into her city and um he's trying to form an army in a town where there are rarely any men <laughs> and so he's kind of like scrapping together these misfits misfits in these town these misfit men um to make an army and um he ends up falling for our heroine who is named uh susanna very interesting i ended up giving this one a four to five stars um here's the pretty step back 
to pager. You can go check out my historical romance readathon vlog to know my in-depth thoughts for this one. Okay, now we're going to be talking about four books that I read during the historical romance readathon. You can go check out that readathon if you want to know my in-depth thoughts again, but I read the Sinclair, I think it's the Sinclair Brothers series, right? It's called the, yeah, Sinclair Brothers series by Donna Fletcher. I read all four books and so I'm going to be listing those off for you um, and a little short summary of them. So book one is called Return of the Rogue by Donna Fletcher and this is a marriage, arranged marriage trope um, and I ended up giving this one four stars. Book two is Under the Highlander Spell um, and this one has kind of like a witchy aspect in here which was really really fun. Gave this one four stars. Also a heroine is kind of like a medic slash doctor nurse thing so. Then I read uh, The Angel and the Highlander by Donna Fletcher book number three and I ended up giving this one five stars. This is the one that has the uh, nun trope in here. Our heroine is pretending to be a nun to escape um, an arranged marriage and our hero finds her. Really fun, really loved this one. And then the last one in that series is uh, The Highlander's Forbidden Bride. I ended up giving this one four stars and this is an enemies to lovers trope. It also has the one bed trope in here. So if you're looking for books that have the one bed trope, this one fits the bill. <laughs> so yeah, I read all four of those books in the Historical Romance Readathon. Go check out that vlog if you wanna know my in-depth thoughts about it. Then I read A Week to Be Wicked by Tessa Dare. This is the second book to the Spindle Cove series I just talked about. This one is really 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 fun. So this one is about our heroine lives in Spindle Cove. She has glasses. She's into geology. She studies rocks and our hero is the nephew to the hero from the first book and he is a big rig. He's a big womanizer. Our heroine Minerva like has this proposition for him. If you take me to Scotland to go to this geology conference like I'll give you the money that I win at this conference because I'm gonna win because it's like a competition um, and so uh, it's like a road trip between the two of them they like don't really like each other and so while they're on this trip they slowly start developing feelings for each other if you like road trip books I really recommend this one um, because they go on a lot of adventures they meet a lot of people they do a lot of things um, I normally don't like road trip books but that's normally only in contemporary settings historical romances or fantasy romances where it's a road trip I find really really fun this one was super duper fun for me and I really felt the heroine in here I wear glasses a lot of men like tell her you'd be so much pretty if you just didn't wear your glasses and she's like but then I couldn't see <laughs> so I completely felt her on that the uh hero was super funny and I really loved his character development and he deals with some trauma that he tries to get over so really enjoyable I ended up giving this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars then I read a touch of darkness by Starlet Scarlet that's my middle name. I should be able to say it. Scarlet St. Clair. I buddy read this with Crystal over at Crystal's Bookish Life. And this one was so good. This is a Hades and Persephone retelling. And if you don't know, Hades and Persephone retellings are everything to me. I love Hades and Persephone so much. And so this one was super fun. This is kind of like a fantastical fantasy world where it's kind of like ours um but the Greek gods like actually exist and they're celebrities and so our heroine Persephone is the goddess of spring but nobody knows um and she goes to college and her best friend um convinces her one day to go to the club that Hades owns um for a night of fun um even though her mother told her that she's not supposed to like see any of the gods. So they go to this club and she ends up meeting a man and playing like a card game with him and she gets in a deal with him not knowing that that is actually Hades. She gets in like this like bind with him where in six months if you can make life in the underworld something will happen. I don't remember her reward but like if she can't make life in the underworld within six months uh that will be her new home. Like she will not be able to leave the underworld. And so it's a romance between Hades and Persephone and I had so much fun reading this with Crystal. It was so much fun discussing it with her and I believe we gave it the same rating 4.5. I totally agree with her with um the part where it was like really fast with how fast they got together. Um, we kind of wanted a more of a slower burn with them um, and that didn't really happen in this one. It really reminded me of Lore Olympus which is a comic, online comic series. Um, I stopped reading that at a certain point um, but I had a lot of fun reading that comic series and this reminded me so much of that comic series. I really loved how unique our author made it. She made it her own story which was really cool but I really liked the Persephone and Hades aspect in there as well. It was overall really unique. I really liked it and so I ended up giving this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Next we have two books a part of the Immortals After Dark series. I'm trying to finish this series by the end of the year. I think we only have three books left so I think we can do it. Um, I read Dark Sky by Cresty Cole which was book number 14 a part of the series. This one is like I think tied as my favorite because it is so good. This one is a childhood crush and then it takes place years later 
to lovers um but our hero and heroine have hated each other and have been out to get each other ever since they were children um because something happened to both of them when they were kids to where they like hate each other now and are out to get one another but our hero knows like that's my mate. I hate her, but she's my mate, so I need to get her. It's it's absolutely insane. So our hero um, is kind of like a demon, but also like like kind of like as you can see, like a lightning angel kind of thing. Uh, he has wings. Something happened when he was younger. The heroine had something to do with it, uh, to where his wings are damaged and he's not able to fly correctly, um, and he wasn't healed properly. Our heroine, Lancy, is a sorceress. She can tell people what to, like her power is like command like whatever she commands you to do you have to do it like that's her power uh this one was just honestly like so good i loved this one so much i believe demon from the dark and this one are my two favorites so far the couple was just amazing and i loved their arc i loved their storyline it was just beautiful and then i ended up reading the next book in this series which was sweet ruin book number 15. um this one deals with characters we've never ever seen before which was really cool this is about josephine and you don't really know what mythical creature she is um because i didn't know until the end so i'm not going to spoil it but this is about josephine she's been this like creature who can like kind of like come in and out like become invisible and then not become visible like she, she can flip between the two and then she also drinks blood like nobody really knows what she is until then she meets like years later when she's like in her 20s she ends up meeting um rune who is a part of this lore species that like is almost extinct and is like crazed and people don't really like this species apparently and then she sees him one day and that's like her first lore creature she's ever seen other than herself and so like she goes to investigate it is a romance between the two of them it is a very interesting i ended up giving this one and i forgot to say it. i gave the last one five stars as well i really liked this one um i think it's like up there with my favorites top five and i really liked how like the old characters of part of the series were interwoven into this one the one thing that i really loved in this story is how you see our heroine grow throughout the book so i really like this one and then the last book that i'm going to be talking about which was my favorite book of the month which is so far my favorite book of the year spoiler alert by olivia dade all of my friends love this book and so i was so excited to start it this one i i've been wanting to read for so long and i finally got the audiobook off of livy and that audiobook was so amazing so this is a uh, contemporary romance and our heroine april here she writes fan fiction and so uh one of her best friends she's never actually met them in person because they also write fan fiction on this site but they both write fan fiction for this show that's very game of thrones-esque and she doesn't know that the her online friend is actually the main male character in that tv series um and he does not like how his character has been on the show so he went to fan fiction to write the story that he did want they have been friends for many years they don't know who the person actually is and so our heroine one day really wants to post a cosplay Ooh, there's my hair is stuck in the book <laughs> really wants to post a cosplay she does of one of the heroines in the tv show and so she does and she gets kind of ridiculed and bashed on twitter um because she is plus size and so our hero here not knowing that that's his like internet friend um as his like actor on his actor twitter he's basically like defending her by saying i want to take her on a date can you go on a date with me um so he asks her on a date and they go on a date not knowing who the other person is again and then like he finds out that that's actually his like internet friend it's it's their romance dealing with fandom and fan fiction i love the whole talk in here about like body positivity and learning to like love yourself i connected with april like so much in this book i want a future boyfriend or partner to be like our hero in here and like not give a living crap about what other people like think when it comes to like body type um like he doesn't give a living crap he loves april because she is april i love that and that's really hard to like picture in real life though because i am 22 men like that most of them don't think like that i also loved in here both our characters were um older i believe he's in his 40s and she's in her 30s so i really like that but again guys my age don't think like that so it's really hard to like think about a person being like that in real life if you know what i mean but that's something that i strive for a relationship that i strive for i loved this so much i'm gonna stop gushing about it because i can gush about this all day long um all my friends loved it and i completely understand why so um yeah i gave this one five stars Whew, so there you have it that's my very long <laughs> january wrap up please let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to but anyways thank you all so so much for watching i will see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all mm -hmm.